This video will walk you through an example setup process for a local development environment of the GenVid Services server for the GenVid tank sample. At the end of the process, you will be able to launch the GenVid Services and play the Unity project while viewing it via a web stream broadcast from our local machine. Before you begin, you need to install the GenVid SDK. First, register an account and download the SDK from genvidtech.com. Once you've downloaded it, run the installer and choose the option to install the complete SDK. The installer will install a few dependencies, such as Python 3.5.4, Visual C++ build tools, Node.js, Tight VNC, and AWS command line client. If you need to install Python as part of the installation, ensure that the Add Python 3.5 to Path is checked, as the GenVid SDK requires Python to be able to execute commands from a terminal instance. If you already have Python installed, ensure that the Python script directory is available in your path by viewing the environment variables in the environment variables window or in PowerShell by using the command $env colon path. If you're prompted to install Node.js, proceed with the standard installation and ensure that the feature Add to Path is selected. Perform the same steps for the remainder of the dependencies that need to be installed on your local machine. Once the complete SDK has been installed, open a Windows PowerShell instance by pressing the Windows and R keys and typing PowerShell. From the command line interface, navigate to the SDK directory at C drive genvid and type the command shown on screen. The genvid tank sample contains some scripts that are tailored for Unity projects. Open the genvid folder in Windows Explorer by right-clicking in the project view and selecting Show in Explorer. Move the GenVid Services zip file to the directory above the Unity project and unzip the contents. In this video, both our Unity project and GenVid Services are located in C drive GenVid. Now that you have the GenVid SDK installed and GenVid Services ready to go, let's continue. Now we need to modify a configuration file so that GenVid Services knows where to locate the build for our Unity project. Go to the GenVid Services forward slash config directory and open the game.hcl file with the text editor. In the config scope, change the path variable to match the location and name of your build. Now, let's head to PowerShell and add the location of our installation of Unity 2018.4 to the path environment variable so that the Python script can launch the editor and kick off the build process automatically. This is important because the version of the editor that you provide the path to is the one that will be launched in the coming steps. In PowerShell, Go to the GenVid Services directory and set up a local environment variable that points to your Unity project. Afterwards, run py.backslashunity.pybuild. This script will build the game and the web service itself, defaulting to a local build. The build command also requires the Unity editor to close, so close Unity if it's still open. Now run genvid bastion install bastion id local bastion load config. This will start up a local Bastion server with the name Local Bastion. By default, you can find the newly installed server in the local user's home directory in the .genvid folder. Now run genvid sdk setup to set it up. For those unfamiliar with Bastion, Bastion is a specialized service that is only part of a network system that has certain functionalities which are exposed outside of the network. It monitors traffic and prevents malicious traffic from accessing vital parts of the internal system therefore minimizing the risk of attacks. The GenVid Bastion supervises other services the SDK needs and allows you, the developer, to monitor their health and status. For more information about its API and how to extend the services, please refer to the documentation. It's a good practice to start with cleaning any old configurations by running GenVid SDK clean config. Next, load in a new blank configuration by running genvid sdk load config sdk. Boot up the cluster UI page with genvid sdk monitor. The cluster UI is where you can find useful information about your server, such as what jobs are running and their health, settings, and logs. In Google Chrome, make sure that the JavaScript is enabled and navigate to the link shown on screen. This will serve as a central point for overseeing the server and everything that is running on it. Now, load the game into the server by running pygenvidproject.pyload. Once that's completed, 
You can start the GenVid services by either typing GenVid SDK Start or by going to the Cluster UI Jobs page and clicking Start All. It's also worth noting that the GenVid services can be started from the game automatically if the Activate SDK field of the GenVid Session Manager is set to True or by clicking the Start All button in the GenVid window in Unity. Next, find the links for the admin user and live stream on the console UI. Now that you have the local environment set up and running, the GenVid SDK is composed of three major parts. The Spectator Game Client, which renders and streams the view of the game that viewers will watch. The GenVid services receive and encode that stream along with data from the game. And lastly, the GenVid overlay receives the broadcast data and allows viewers to watch and interact with the live stream and the game through it. It's worth noting that in the GenVid tank sample, both the spectator client and GenVid services are running locally for ease of setup. In a production deployment, both would be running in the cloud. To see how GenVid integrates into Unity, please take a look at the GenVid and Unity video. And for those interested in how to integrate web interfaces, please take a look at the viewer web stream video next.